this video and this message is um, intended to uh, talk to Andrew, uh, who is the administrator of the Colorado Springs DeVita locations. I've been a patient at DeVita uh, since September of 2016, uh, after having spent uh, approximately six months in the hospital um, and being in four medically induced comas uh, for a wide range of conditions, um, ultimately stemming from Weg Wegner's granulomatosis. I've been on dialysis for just over a year now, and, and like I said, I've been going to DeVita for about seven of the last 12 months. When we originally started there, and after talking to the nurses and the staff and my nephrologist, um, we all decided that I would be a good patient or a good candidate for peritoneal dialysis, um, which, which was very exciting for me and my wife and our family in general, because that meant that I wouldn't have to go to the dialysis center three days a week. Um, it meant that I would be able to do dialysis at home um, and, and then get kind of part of my life back so that I can go and do the things that I have to do. When we originally started talking about getting me onto peritoneal dialysis, um, we were told that um, we were going to be getting that process started by January and that shortly thereafter I would be able to do dialysis at home and then things would just move on from there. When January came and went and we asked what was going on, there was a lot of, I don't know. Um, and, and that's not me saying, I don't know. That's everybody at dialysis that I talked to saying, I don't know. Um, nobody seems to have an answer as to why January came and went, but I still wasn't even being prepped for peritoneal dialysis. Nobody had talked to me um, from the, the PD portion of things as far as what it looked like, uh, as far as the process was concerned. Um, it, it, no, nobody talked to me about the treatment. Nobody talked to me about anything. So my wife and I regularly asked and begged, begged to get more information on this so we could get the process started. Because the thing that the people at dialysis, uh, at Davida Dialysis don't seem to understand is that I'm not just a kidney patient. I'm also a heart patient and a lung patient and a brain patient. And here very, very soon, I'm gonna be a psych patient as well. For the last seven months, the amount of ineptitude and incompetence that I have seen from some of the staff at Defeated Dialysis has been mind boggling. The lack of communication, the, the inability to take responsibility for the lack of communication has, has just been mind numbing. We've been asking for months to get this process started. Here it is the middle of April and, and sure I'm, I'm doing manual exchanges at home seven days a week, four times a day. But that didn't come without some challenges. The weeks leading up to finally getting started in the peritoneal training was met with a lot of resistance and a lot of insults and a lot of threats. I was hospitalized January 23rd, 2016, or February 23rd, 2016, and I didn't get to come home until July 12th of that same year. I was in four medically induced comas. I had several alveolar hemorrhages. My kidneys shut down. My lungs shut down. I've been diagnosed with congestive heart failure. But the only thing Andrew is concerned about is my dialysis. He told me and my wife that we don't take my health seriously, that we're being non-compliant because I had to miss a couple of dialysis appointments to go to other doctor's appointments to keep me alive. I, on a regular basis, have to have chemotherapy treatments that take an entire day. I have to have cardiac tests that take several hours. But that doesn't matter to Andrew because if I'm not there every day that I'm scheduled to be there, then I don't care about my health, that, that I'm being non-compliant with my dialysis treatments. And, and maybe by definition, I was being non-compliant. But what good is dialysis if my heart gives out? What good is dialysis if I can't breathe? Those aren't rhetorical questions. I'd really like to know. What good is dialysis if something else kills me? I've had to put off multiple procedures and doctor's appointments and treatments and, and tests to be less non-compliant for Andrew. I've had to postpone my sleep studies twice. I've had cardiac tests postponed twice, but that's not good enough. Today, we got a message from Glennis 
the person who trained me and my wife to do peritoneal dialysis. The message we got today said that we weren't going to be able to get me on a cycler until next month. We're supposed to go in tomorrow after doing um, a 24-hour collection today. We've got a meeting at 10 o'clock tomorrow to go in and talk about everything. But now we're finding out that we get to keep doing this for several more weeks because they've got one person on staff who can train for a cycler. Though we've been told for four and a half, five months now that I should have been on peritoneal dialysis in January. Recently, prior to being on the PD tra uh, treatments, after having been told that I was being non-compliant, my wife and I went to our local uh, treatment facility so I could get dialysis. I was, I've been, I was scheduled to be there uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday from noon until three. And we had to stick to a very, very tight schedule because we've got an eight-year-old severely autistic child who had his, has his own medical needs and has his own therapies that he has to go to and, and doctor's appointments that I have to be there for because sometimes to do simple things like take his temperature, he has to be physically restrained. And I have to be part of that. So yeah, I've been non-compliant a few times. So I showed up at 12 o'clock that day to get my dialysis done. Only to find out that my schedule had been changed without anybody telling me. After I had been accused of being non-compliant and not caring about my health. I've spent every day for 14 months fighting day after day to keep myself alive. My wife has done the exact same thing, but at greater lengths, because at least I had the, the ability to be in a coma for seven weeks last year. But as far as Andrew's concerned, we're not taking my health seriously. He calls me and my wife hostile. He gets upset when I use bad language at him. And I'll admit, I have used a lot of bad language around and towards Andrew. Because I've tried the nice approach. I've tried rolling over and just accepting whatever they've thrown at me for the last seven months. And I've had enough. I've had enough of being pushed around and being lied to, misdirected, and giving three different bits of information from three different people. But every person I talk to says, well, you need to listen to that person. But here's what I think, too. And you need to listen to both of us, even though neither of us have talked to each other. And neither of us have the same information for you. So I've been hostile. I've used bad language. Today, I called Andrew sweetheart instead of calling him a motherfucker. And you know what? He got just as upset by sweetheart as he did his motherfucker. Guess what? It's not sweetheart anymore. I promise that. I have never been more disappointed in any facility that I've been in with the ineptitude, the incompetence, and the lack of communication that could cost me my life because he's more worried about his numbers than he has compassion or sensitivity to the needs of his patients. If you want to get a hold of me, send me an email. I'll have an email address in the description of this video. If somebody at DeVita has the guts to pick up the phone and call me or email me, the information you need will be in the description below. But I'm willing to bet that nobody there has the balls. So while I was editing this video, my wife brought up a really good point. And that is that there are several staff members at the location that I go to are very, very good at their jobs, who listen, who are compassionate, who actually seem to care about their patients. I've had nurses and other staff members go outside and talk to me when I've lost it, to get my side of the story, to find out what was going on in my situation. Andrew's never bothered to do that. Andrew's never bothered to talk to me to find out why I'm so hostile. He knows why, but he's never had the courage to come talk to me. But I can say with absolute certainty that several of the people who work at that location are amazing.
And it's just unfortunate that they've got leadership like they do at the local level. So I want you to understand that some of the staff there are really, really good people. I just don't think Andrew's one of them.